Okay, and as we finish up determining theta, one thing to keep in mind is that when we take the tangent inverse, that gives us only things in quadrants one and four. So if we needed to find an angle that was in quadrant two, we might want to use cosine inverse instead of tangent inverse, which of course we can do. Cosine would give us the x divided by r, and we would just do our cosine inverse. So we need to keep track of which quadrants our inverse trig functions work in. Okay, I realized I made a mistake on the start of the second video, and that was finding the point or the polar coordinates of with a radius less than zero and an angle theta between negative two pi and zero. Our original point was here at three comma pi six. So I needed to find a radius that was negative. Well, it's just going to be negative three. And then to find the angle here, we when we want to go across the circle, we add or subtract pi. So if I subtracted pi, because that will get me into the negative values, I would have pi six minus pi. Get your common denominator by multiplying by six over six, and we would get negative three comma pi six minus six pi six gives me a negative five pi over six. So this was back on example two, part D. Your answer should have been negative three, negative five pi six, and I made a mistake on that, so I just wanted to correct it. Okay, let's turn to the last page, example five. So here we're trying to take our x and y, so let's make sure we remember this x and y, this is our rectangular coordinates, and convert them to polar coordinates. So we're going to be using the steps we just outlined on the previous page. Step one was to graph them, or sketch, it's very rough, just to make sure we know what quadrant we're in. So positive two, negative two, that's going to be a quadrant four that I'm looking for. Step two is to determine our radius, and we're going to use the formula radius equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So let's substitute in our values. My x value is two, so two squared, plus a negative two squared, and all of that square rooted. Two squared gives me four. Negative two squared also gives me four, so be careful of that. You need parentheses if you do this in the calculator. So my radius is the square root of eight, which we would want to simplify, because this has a perfect square as one of its factors. So eight breaks into the four times two. So my radius is two root two because the square root of four is two. There's my radius. So now we've got to calculate theta. Theta equals the tangent inverse of, X, or of y divided by x. So in this example, it's going to be negative two divided by two, which is the same as negative one. So this would give me tangent inverse of negative one. And looking at our unit circle, we should be able to find this. Looking in quadrants one and four, I find that my angle theta is at seven pi fourths. Now we know that tangent inverse does not give us a value of seven pi fourths. It gives us a value of negative pi halves to positive pi halves. So I would need to subtract two pi from this to get an appropriate angle. Finding the common denominator by multiplying by four over four, and I'm going to find that my angle theta is negative pi over four. So converting my rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates gives me a radius of two square root of two with theta of negative pi fourths. Okay, let's try another one. And feel free to pause the video and try this on your own first if you want. We're going to graph our point. So this is at negative one, negative square root of three. So somewhere in quadrant three. Step two is calculate the radius. And again, we're using that formula. Radius equals x squared plus y squared. So let's put in our values here. Negative one squared plus negative square root of three squared. So that's going to give me square root of one plus three. So in other words, the square root of four. So my radius is two. The square root of four equals two. Theta, okay, so theta I'm going to find the tangent inverse of y divided by x. So tan, oops, 
tan inverse of negative square root of 3 divided by negative 1. And again, let's simplify that to start. So negative divided by negative is positive. So square root of 3 divided by 1 is just the square root of 3. And let's take a look at our unit circle now to find where this angle happens. Here's our unit circle with the tangents written on the outside. So I'm looking for what angle gives me a tangent value of square root of 3. So right here, we're at pi thirds. So theta equals pi thirds. However, pi thirds is quadrant 1, and I need quadrant 3. So I need to be diagonally across from that. So from here, I need to come all the way over to here. Well, in the unit circle, it's easy to see. We know that's going to be 4 pi thirds. But just to make sure you know how to do that, what we really have to do is just add pi to that angle. So if we had something that was not on the unit circle and you needed to get to the opposite quadrant, you would add pi. And that's going to give me 4 pi over 3. So my rectangular coordinates for this point are at 2 comma 4 pi over 3. And that would be your answer. Now all of these things we've been doing are just converting points from rectangular to polar and polar to rectangular. We're now going to look at some equations. So example seven, we're dealing with equations. And we're going to be starting with a radius and a theta, so that means we're starting in polar. And I want to convert this to rectangular. So we've got to think about what kind of substitutions we can make. We know what radius squared equals x squared plus y squared. So if I had a radius squared, I could substitute, but I don't. I also know if I had r times sine of theta, I could substitute in a y there. Again, I don't have r times sine of theta. But I could solve both those problems if I multiplied the equation. So let's take our equation and multiply both sides of the equation by r, because that will give me things that I can work with then. So I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by r, which gives me r squared equals 4. And typically, we like to have these values up together. So the r, I'm going to put right after the 4, and then sine of theta. r squared, we know what that is. That's the same as x squared plus y squared equals, I still have the 4. But r times sine of theta, we know that's the same thing as y. So my equation in rectangular form is x squared plus y squared equals 4y. And it says identify the graph. Hopefully we remember from Algebra 2 that this is just a circle. OK, let's try another problem. Again, going from polar, because I've got a radius, no x's and y's, and I want x and y's. So I could multiply both sides of the equation by r, but if I did that, I don't, I end up with 6r on the right, which I can't do anything with that. The other way to get r squared here would be to square both sides of the equation. So I'm going to do that because that's going to allow me to continue working with the problem. So squaring both sides, I get r squared equals 36. R squared, we know we can substitute x squared plus y squared for the r squared equals 36. And again, this gives me a circle. The center is at 0, 0, and the circle has a radius of 6. One last problem. We're going the opposite direction. We're going from rectangular, and we want to go to polar. So we know, again, we've got r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Looks like I've got an x squared and a y squared, but I just need to get the 3s away from them. So let's divide every part of the equation by 3. Once we do that, we have x squared plus y squared equals 2 thirds. I'm going to substitute for the x squared plus y squared and put an r squared there. So r squared equals 2 thirds. And we could simplify that if we wanted just r by itself. So if we wanted r by itself, I would have to take the square root of both sides and that's going to give me r equals the square root of 2 over the square root of 3, which, of course, you would not leave that way. You would rationalize it by multiplying by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and you will get square root of 6 over 3 as your radius. And that would be your polar equation. Okay, good luck. Come see us if you have any questions.